The Lost Ark community is obviously pretty unhappy with the recent reveal and news that the majority of the world would be cut off from playing the game once it launches their new version in fall of 2021. People have been waiting for this game now for a long, long time. Lost Ark has been out in Korea since late 2018, the Russian region in 2019, and Japan in 2020. Amazon has made a few statements about this region lock, so I figured I would try and keep people up to date on this and keep everyone in the loop on what to expect going forward. To address what the problem is real quick, even so far as the statement back in August of 2020, when Amazon and Smilegate announced their partnership originally, it was always very clear as to the release intentions. It says literally North America and Europe were the only two regions listed at any time. The issue being that for most games, even if the game is not releasing in your region in terms of having servers there and support for you and your languages to get the best ping, etc., they usually do not actively stop or block you from connecting if you just want to go and enjoy the game with worse ping. There are some mechanics at play here that people are likely unaware of as they just see region block, region restriction, IP blocks, or whatever else you want to call it, and they see Amazon, the big bad person, coming in, stomping around, slapping that nice succulent MMORPG cake out of the player's hands. Now, unfortunately, no one can publicly say whether or not Amazon had the opportunity to buy the rights for Lost Ark in other regions, if it was even on the table at any time, or if maybe they cheaped out on the contract, but it is entirely possible, and in my opinion, the most likely, that they just never had the opportunity to get the game in other regions. The reason that this happens is because of how publishing agreements work. To illustrate this as simply as possible, you have Smilegate, the developer, then you have regions A, B, C, and D. If Smilegate was to sell the rights to publish the game to region A first, they could charge a relatively high fee for this, as that means they will be getting first to market with the product. It is exclusive, and so that makes it valuable. Region A publisher would love for everyone in the world to be allowed to connect to their version of the game and cash in on that. It would be huge. But if you allow Region A publisher to do that, Region B, C, and D will pay you less and less money for the product as they do not have guaranteed exclusivity for their own region's player base. Why would you buy the rights to operate a game if everyone in your region could just connect to a Region A and play on their servers, likely with less expensive cash shop purchases, due to Region A being a lower income country. This means that what Smilegate or any other company will always do is outline in the contract that the company they sell the rights to must enforce a strict region restriction to only countries they have officially bought the rights for, which then of course allows Smilegate to continue selling the rights to other regions for the same game for a high fee and a high revenue split due to this enforced exclusivity, they know that once they get into those contract negotiations, you do have a guaranteed audience and player base because they can't play on any other servers as they're all region locked. More on this in a little while, but here is what Amazon representatives are actually saying about this scenario. From the Twitch live stream, you have a community manager saying that they hear the community and they're doing everything they can to provide the service of Lost Ark to places like Latin America, Australia, New Zealand, and more. They're working with Smilegate right now, but unfortunately from the way this is phrased, it doesn't inspire me with a ton of confidence, at least in the short term. Here's the clip. Yeah, um, the game yeah, is it, amazing. Is that open for everybody, Cy? Si? Like, anybody can sign up and play? Uh, right now, uh, and actually, this is a, a great moment for me to address uh, Latin America, Australia, uh, New Zealand, other parts of the world. We definitely see you. We hear you. <laughs> uh, we know that um, Lost Ark... Right now, we, we don't, unfortunately, have the rights to publish in those countries and, and in those regions. But as we work with Smilegate, um, we, we hope that that changes in the future. Um, so you guys are going to get there. Hear you. you guys are going to get there. Yeah, hope, don't, don't worry hopefully. about that. I think it was fairly far-fetched to assume in a very short amount of time since the Lost Ark official release announcement that we would get something more concrete. But it does appear that all the social media messages, the YouTube videos, and the outpouring of desire to play this game, as well as, of course, the outrage, has got Amazon trying hard to get those countries included within the publishing rights. They also had a developer for Amazon Game Studios posting on the Steam discussion section for Lost Ark, stating they are collecting information and will escalate it to the right teams. He also states, and I'll quote, for all the folks in the regions that we do not have the publishing rights to Lost Ark for, we do hear you. I'm escalating your feedback and hopes to the right legal and executive teams. These contract matters are not simple, and I do not know what is possible, but I'm sharing your asks. Now, this is not a guarantee that anything positive happens towards this situation resolution. As I can imagine, Amazon were already aware there would be a market in these other regions and countries for this game. It does not sound all that hopeful, 
at least in the short term. He also goes on to talk about the Belgium and Netherlands situation, which if you didn't know, those countries can currently not play. And he clarifies upon earlier remarks that they cannot guarantee support for players in Belgium and Netherlands due to the local regulations. And this is, of course, talking about how they handle loot boxes in their local law. Dutch and Belgian players will be unable to play in the technical alpha, which is currently ongoing. They did previously mention they're working hard to get these two countries included in the full launch. But again, there is no confirmation that these will be 100% available at launch. So all we have at this time, unfortunately, is Amazon employees basically saying, we've heard you and we'll try our best to get the rights to publish the game in your region. But they already must have known and I'm not sure what's going to have changed this time. Maybe they offer them more money, but we'll have to wait and see on this one. As for why Smilegate would be unwilling to include extra regions for the sale, perhaps it is Amazon not paying enough. Perhaps they just want different companies to operate the game in the different regions, or perhaps they take the publishing for their games extremely seriously and want to take the rollout really slowly. If we cast our minds back to when Lost Ark was being rumoured to release in North American Europe every year, basically for the last three or four years, it was very clear that Smilegate wanted the game to be stable and well received in other regions as well as localised with good language options before it released in these territories. They did not rush the release. They left money on the table. They knew North America and Europe in particular would be large markets for the game and they didn't just rush to give it to any old publisher. They didn't rush to get the game released. They took multiple years to roll this out. Mail.ru is a really, really big company in Russia and they operate a global brand for publishing called My.com. I spoke to some of their employees back when the Russian version was launching and they were also trying to get the publishing rights for the West at that time. They tried for a long time. They have money and they wanted it bad, but they could not get the rights. This was a long, long time before Amazon was announced as a partner, I think a whole year. I say this to basically temper people's expectations for the future based on Amazon hoping to get these rights. It could be entirely out of their hands and not at all feasible. It's sometimes just not their fault. Hopefully they do get the rights or it might be another company, but if it is another company, if they want to get your language options and everything correct, it could be literally another year before you see the game. They might take their game that seriously that they don't want to diminish it by not allowing you to play in your native language and, and on servers that are made specifically for you. We'll have to wait and see, unfortunately. I will for sure keep you up to date on this and I know it is an important topic for a lot of people. They've obviously not included most of the world in any of these publishing agreements, so it does cut off the majority of people who are interested. So you're going to see a lot of this on social media. In the meantime, if you do decide that you want to play Lost Ark and you're not from one of the countries that have been outlined to be allowed to access it, it is apparently quite safe to use a VPN to connect to Steam to circumvent this restriction. So long as you do not purchase any games from the Steam store, while the VPN is active, or they might ban your Steam account. With Lost Ark being a brand new game and free to play, you could use an alternate Steam account just in case, so if it does get banned, it's not that big of a deal. That being said, since it is in the contract to enforce this IP restriction, you if you are discovered, you are going to get banned. So do not talk about being from another country in any kind of communication within the game, or anything that links back to your name or your Steam account that you've created, anything like that, otherwise you will get banned. However, Looking at the Russian version of the game, they ban very little people because it is, of course, in their best interest to keep those customers around, even if it goes against their contract. So long as they can feign ignorance that they do not know you were from outside the allowed region, they'll most likely leave you alone. I've heard of very few people being banned in Russia. Whether or not Amazon will take that same approach or take the enforcement of the contract much more seriously remains to be seen, but I will make a guide on how to connect to the game using a VPN once it is out and publicly playable so that people can give it a shot if they are willing to take that risk. I would not personally recommend it, even if it has a 1% chance to risk your main Steam account, but I also know that people are going to go out their way to do this anyway, so I might as well make sure that they're doing it in the safest way possible. I know that covered most of what we talked about in this video in another video recently, but that was about the overall Lost Ark launch, and I figured this deserved a standalone video with the new information, as this is stuff you'd have to dig through a bunch of Reddit threads or be keeping up to date with the Steam discussion, which you obviously can't even see if you're in the region restricted areas, unfortunately. So, so yeah, thanks as always for watching. I'll try to keep you up to date on everything Lost Ark related as and when we get the information. Check out my socials in the video description, Twitch to come watch me react to videos, play games, join in the conversation, all that kind of good stuff. Discord if you want to come chat to everybody in the community. Patreon to throw a few coins to the MMO Watcher. And yeah, I appreciate you all. Hopefully see you on the next one. Stay safe out there. We out. Peace.